or is at such a hectic pace it would exhaust anyone, let alone a three-month pregnant woman carrying the precious cargo of the Queen's next great-grandchild. But behind the warm smile and energetic enthusiasm she is pouring into her first royal tour, Meghan Markle is sensibly caring for her and Harry's first child. The Duchess of Sussex has built secret rest breaks into the dizzying schedule she and Prince Harry have stuck to in the first three days of their down-under visit. On day one of the tour at the Opera House, after running twenty minutes late for their descent of the Grand Steps, Meghan and Harry were whisked away with security saying she was unwell and needed a rest. Asked about the Duchess of Sussex's health, a media representative on the ground in Sydney told News.com. Oh, it was nothing and that Prince Harry's wife was perfectly all right. On day two, however, after arriving at Dubbo Airport, meeting schoolchildren and then royal flying doctor service patients, volunteers and staff, the royals vanished out of the back of the hangar. Asked where the couple was, their representatives told News.com. Oh, the Duke and Duchess were just having a break, for about 15 minutes. Next they were whisked off to the sheep and cattle farm outside Dubbo, where Meghan memorably presented the banana bread she had baked in Admiralty House's archaic kitchens. Running late for the community walk among a buzzing throng of country locals at Dubbo's Victoria Park, the royals arrived just as lightning struck and the heavens opened. Prince Harry could be seen clutching an umbrella and his wife with a strong arm around her as they stood beneath an umbrella with the rain teeming down. It was then Meghan's turn, with the diminutive Duchess in her high-heeled black suede boots holding the brawly above her tall husband's head as he delivered his speech about men's mental health. With time against them, the royals took off for a slightly abbreviated walk among the locals in the park. And then they disappeared again, for about twenty minutes, before reappearing to take off in the royal motorcade on the fifth and final Dubbo stop, to meet indigenous students at Dubbo College Girls Academy. The Royal Australian Air Force plane taking the Royals back to Sydney took off from Dubbo Airport around 3 p.m., the end of what was considered a short day in the tour. Wednesday in Melbourne was another busy day with six events, again with the Royal couple running behind schedule, perhaps because of breaks added in for the expecting mother. But Friday should provide Meghan with a respite from her elegantly turned out stilettos on Bondi Beach where the Duchess is expected to go barefoot for a meet-the-people walk. Meghan and Harry are due to meet one wave, the Bondi Surfing Community's Mental Health and Well-Being Awareness Group. They will take part in Floro Friday, where people share their experiences with mental health issues and interact with others while surfing and doing yoga. After Bondi, however, it is expected Meghan will peel off from Harry and go back to Admiralty House for a break. The Duke is due to climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge on Friday afternoon with Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Invictus Games competitors to raise the Invictus flag. Late in the afternoon, Meghan and Harry will meet opposition leader Bill Shorten at Admiralty House, followed by the Duchess meeting the PM. By Friday evening's receptions meeting opposition leader Bill Shorten and the PM again at Admiralty House, the Duke and Duchess will be able to mark off 23 events from their crowded tour. Only 53 to go. Apart from a visit to Fraser Island next Monday, their Royal Highnesses will mostly be attending Invictus Games events in Australia. But the eager communities of Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand await the Royal Couple's arrival for further days of their event-packed Pacific visit. Meghan's supportive entourage may have more of her secret breaks scheduled for the blooming Duchess to put her feet up. One thing she doesn't have to sweat about is appearing beautiful for the ever-present cameras, the Duchess of Sussex seemingly incapable of taking anything but a great shot. Prince Harry has quite the fan club. On the third day of their tour down under, Harry and his pregnant wife Meghan Markle arrived holding hands to meet thousands gathered on the grounds of the city's Royal Botanic Gardens on Thursday morning, Australian time. While most of the crowd could hardly contain their excitement when approached by the newlyweds, one girl in particular broke down in, very happy, tears after the 34-year-old prince pulled her in for a sweet embrace. Prince Harry just hugged me, 
19-year-old India Brown told the Herald Sunday I've loved that family since I was eight and I've followed them around the world. It was just such an opportunity and I just went for it, Brown told the outlet. I didn't expect it to happen because it's actually against protocol. I said I know it's against royal protocol but can I please have a hug? Brown recounted. He hugged me and I burst into tears. He just said oh you're going to get me in trouble. Nonetheless, Megan, 37, certainly didn't seem to mind as she too greeted a plethora of elated fans. For the appearance, which Harry and Meghan arrived 20 minutes late to, the former Suits star wore a navy dress, the same color she wore to Princess Eugenie's royal wedding on Friday, by Australian designer Dion Lean matching Manolo suede heels, and she carried Gucci's Sovi mini chain clutch. She topped her ensemble with a Martin Grant trench coat the exact one she wore just two days ago in Sydney. After opting for a low ponytail yesterday, she returned to a bouncy blowout for the outing. Just three days into their tour, Harry and Meghan have already provided their fans with a number of memorable moments. After arriving in Dubbo yesterday, the prince greeted six-year-old Luke Vincent of Bunyang Public School and the young boy leapt into his arms for a giant hug before playfully caressing his face and tugging at his beard. As Harry laughed at the encounter, Meghan quickly came over to meet the animated young fan and was also greeted with a warm hug. Prince Harry also found a young royal fan who was wearing a shirt that read Girls Can Do Anything in Sydney, who had a striking resemblance to his wife. We feel she looks a bit like you. A person in the crowd is heard telling Meghan in a video posted by Harry underscore Meghan underscore updates on Instagram. The Duchess of Sussex replies, I was literally about to say the same thing. Harry then took a fan's phone to snap a photo of Meghan with her mini-me, a rare move for the prince, who usually adheres to the royal protocol of no autographs or selfies. Following their meeting with fans, the royal couple headed to the government house for the young Victorian leader's reception. Meghan lost her coat to participate in an event encouraging women to take up sports. After greeting fans in Melbourne, Meghan and Harry headed to a reception with local government. They'll wrap the third day of their jam-packed 16-day tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand performing a beach cleanup with local school children. Straight out of a romantic comedy, y'all. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle looked so in love during a torrential downpour in Dubbo on Wednesday, October 17. The newlyweds, who recently announced they're expecting their first child together, are currently in the middle of a 16-day tour to Fiji, Donga, New Zealand, and of course, Australia. Meghan looked lovingly at her man while holding an umbrella over him during a speech and he reciprocated the same facial expression in a separate pic. I mean, come on. This these two are just too adorable. Harry, 34, and Meghan, 37, shared their exciting baby news on Monday, October 15 right before beginning their first leg of the tour. Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019. Kensington Palace revealed in a statement. Their Royal Highnesses have appreciated all of the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share this happy news with the public. The, literally perfect looking, couple attended the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank on Friday, October 12th, and Meghan was super sneaky about hiding her baby bump at the special event. I knew she was pregnant when she wore that massive coat. Over, the weekend. One user commented on Twitter. I knew Meghan Markle was pregnant when she wore the coat dress to Princess Eugenie's wedding, added another. While hindsight is 2020, the Duchess of Sussex often wears figure flattering ensembles, and the billowy number seemed a bit odd. In fact, the former Suits actress totally distracted us from her bump just three weeks before announcing the news, by changing up her hairstyle. Instead of rocking her typical curly hair, Meg opted for a sleek straight do, and naturally, the press went wild. After all, it's not every day that a royal decides to switch up her signature hairstyle. In fact, the Duchess' sister-in-law, Kate Middleton, seemingly did the same thing when she was pregnant.
Back in September 2017, a Twitter user theorized that Kate uses her hair to distract the media from her growing belly. Pattern as Duchess of Cambridge changes her hairstyle, people concentrate on her head, and, then, she, announces, the, pregnancy, they wrote. Interesting. Speculation aside, one thing's for sure, Harry and Meghan are so freaking in love it hurts. Also, their baby is gonna be drop-dead gorgeous. Oh, my God.